Thank you for the introduction and thank you for the invitation. Um, the last conference in which I took part uh, was very inspiring for my research, so I hope that this conference will have the same effect on my research. So, Podhale is a beautiful mountainous region in southern Poland, known for its landscape, holiday resorts and the Gurale. Highlanders, the indigenous people of Podhale, who are very proud of their tradition and culture. Everyone in Poland knows Podhale and has some imaginations connected with this region. I had them either when I settled here almost 15 years ago. I was puzzled when after moving there, I discovered that beside this commonly shared set of idyllic images of Podhale, there was an unrecalled history of Jewish inhabitants of that region. For instance, those pictures. Here we see, this is Janek Schneider, Jewish inhabitant of Nowy Park, and this idyllic place with the cows, uh, with the cows pastoring, pastor on the grass, those are mass graves or Jewish inhabitants of Rabka. As in many other localities, no one spoke of the fate of several thousand Jews who lived here before the war and were annihilated in the Holocaust, and of course no one spoke of the attitudes of the town's Polish residents toward the Holocaust and toward their neighbors. During the Second World War, Podhala region was a crucial part of Kreis Neumark, Novetark County, the smallest county in Krakow district of General Gouvernement. This is a uh, sign with the red line. Before the war, about 7,400 Jews lived in the communities incorporated into Kreis Neumark. In none of these towns and villages there were, uh, where they lived, the percentage of Jews exceeded 21% of the population. Nowhere in Podhale did I find a district or a street inhabited ex exclusively by Jews. On the contrary, the archival uh, registers show that Polish and Jewish residents usually lived side by side, separated only by a fence, often sharing backyards, corridors and stairwells. stairwells. No one was anonymous, but sharing a common space and activities was not tantamount to constituting a Polish-Jewish community. And although there were no pogroms in Podhale region before the war, in the second half of the 1930s, nationalists organized a boycott, posting pickets in the front of Jewish shops and eateries, smashing the windows of <coughs> Jewish houses, painting anti-Jewish slogans on the walls, and beating Jewish neighbors and fellow citizens. In June 1938, the largest local newspaper, Gazeta Podhala, announced to residents of the region the government authorities that the government authorities considered, quote, the Jews is in the present state of affairs an element that weakness the normal development of national and state strength, and the settling of the Jewish question in Poland could firstly be achieved by a radical decrease in the number of Jews in the Polish state, end of quote. As elsewhere in the country, in Novetark County, Poles and Jews were sharing common space, but commonality of space was definitely not tantamount to commonality of citizenship. This is commonality of space hadn't changed during the war, as ghettoization was not fully accomplished anywhere in the ter territory of the county, and no Jewish district was established in Christ Neumarkt. Poles and Jews shared the same streets, backyards, corridors, and stairwells up to the physical extermination of all Jewish communities in Podhale. It took place during a dozen or so weeks of summer 1942. In the closing stage of the final solution participated the entire Gestapo and Kripo forces, as well as Gendarmeria and Polish Blue Police uh, units from the whole county. In every area from where Jews were deported, the deportation followed a similar pattern. Yudan Aktion was planned for August 30, 1942. The Portis were to be loaded onto the train to Belgium in Novetark, Rabka and Makov. And so all um, of the Jews from the county were to be gathered in these places. In villages with a Jewish population 30 persons or less, all of the adults were murdered on the spot. Children and teenagers were left alive along with one or two adults to chapter one them. And this is the list. Um, it was the list created at the end of 1941, and it was update, updated up to the um, August 1942. 
And this is the list of a few villages in Novotar County. Uh, it was updated for sure after 13 August 1942, when all the adults were killed, only children were left alive, and they were moved to Novotar. The people in larger localities, the elders died on the spot. The people there were being killed in their homes and gardens. Those who tried to escape were being caught and killed in mass executions. Those who were spared had to march to the places where the train to Belgrade was planned to be loaded, even though the distances sometimes was very long, even over 30 kilometers. Through my research, I managed to establish that during Aktion Reinhardt in Kreis Neumark, around 2,000 people were deported to Belgrade, and 1,100 Jewish inhabitants were killed on the spot. I must admit that the scale of Holocaust by ballots in this region was something absolutely surprising to me. Especially when I realized that in all towns and villages of Christ Neumarkt, the tragedy of Jewish inhabitants was taking place in full view of their Polish neighbors. This is the knowledge I, get, I gained in the archives, digging through thousands of documents as no trace of those tragic events would be present in contemporary narration that deals with the local past. This is another picture of mass grave in Rabka. And this is one of the buildings from which uh, Polish people observed those ex executions. Polish description of Aktion Reinhardt could be found mainly in the files of persecutors' investigation of the crimes committed here by Gestapo. They were present also in several oral history accounts. I came across only one Polish diary from the region in which the events connected with the tra tragedy of Jewish neighbors were described. As my time is running, I'd like to focus on those aspects that are most important to me in those testimonies. The first aspect is the separation of faiths. Most of the Polish inhabitants of Podhale were farmers, so the rhythm of those several summer weeks of 1942, the term they worked in the garden and in the field. At the same time, played out the most tragic and final act of the drama of the Jewish neighbors. The parallelism of the Polish time of field work and the abundance of harvest and the Jewish time of death was certainly not intended by Poles. However, it was a manifestation of a complete separation of Polish and Jewish faiths. <laughs> Most witnesses did not interrupt their work when Jews were murdered alongside. Quote, I didn't go to my nephew's house to see the corpses shot because my brother Jan urged me to go into the field. I do not remember what urgent work was in the field, testified, end of quote, testified Franciszek Traczyk from Osielec. His house was next to the building where the marriage of Róża and Abraham Marczak was murdered by Gestapo officer. Some of Poles would stop only for a while. Clemens Zemnik from Zavoya was detained when he was going to Sawmill for boards. On that day before the dawn, the deportation action was begun in his town, or rather village, and the man was ordered to take the corpses of two murdered women, Eleonora Nora Fawereisen and Anna Ebel. Quote, I knew them and I felt sorry for them. On the spot, I stood by the horse and marching Huida and Yangago put the corpses on my wagon. Because I was told that the corpses were to be taken to the cemetery, I took the bodies to the upper cemetery, Catholic cemetery, and placed it there. Then I went home and started to cut oats." End of quote. It is very unlikely that the inhabitants of Christ Neumark would know the Peter Bruegel's landscape with the fall of Icarus. It depicted the old Flemish proverb, quote, no plowman will ever stop his work because a man has died. End of quote. On Bruegel's canvas, nobody is looking at the dying Icarus, while in Novotar, no, <laughs> while in Novotar County, thousands of Poles watch how their Jewish neighbors were killed. And this is the second issue of my presentation. There are dozens of testimonies of Poles from Christ Neumark whose physical closeness to the Holocaust forced them to be its witnesses. Some of them, living under one roof with Jewish families, experienced it from behind the wall. Clemens Szczurek from Zavoya on August 27, 1942, 
was awakened at five o'clock by four Gestapo banging on the door. He heard the noise of heavy shoes and questioned asking Polish for golden dollars. Through the window, he saw his neighbor Emilia Fischer, an elderly woman who lived the same house being dragged out by Gestapo. Quote, then I heard the voices again against through the wall and some sounds like jerks. I heard the young Fischerova in some piercing voice called, give me life. Then he heard two shots and the, the sound of Carl living with Marta, a five-year-old daughter of Rachela Fischer. Not all Polish inhabitants were forced to observe the end of life of their Jewish neighbors through physical closeness. Many wanted to look at their deaths. In the same Zavoya were people who deliberately went to the place of execution. The building in the center of village where the blue police was ordered. Oh, this is um, this one. Where the blue police was ordered um, to keep 22 Jews and uh, that later were executed was next to the Zavoya Zavoyski family. And they, this family recalled as early in the morning our neighbor's Maria Liszka came to us. She told me to go and see how the Germans shoot the Jews in our neighborhood. Also, Marian Wojciechowski was awakened by, by shouts, get up and see how the Gestapo will shoot the Jews, end of quote. Uh, Wojciechowski approached the picked fence and many years later he uh, painted detailed site plan for this place. Poles who lived in the vicinity of Jewish cemetery in Novotark learned very well when, where, and what to look. It was the, as for the weeks of action Reinhardt, they were watching the executions for hours, hidden in the attics of their houses and sheds. And with those number are, m numbers are my, the houses where they gathered to look at executions. Uh, besides those trained observers on 30th of, uh, of August 1942, during the biggest execution on Jewish cemetery in Novotark, there were also other witnesses. Young Polish workers, members of Labour Battalion Baudin's construction service, they were brought uh, by Germans to Novotark, they were given coffee with vodka and then taken to cemetery when they had to dig the mass graves for Jews. After some time, the lorries carrying the Jews unfit for transportation to Belgians arrived. And um, there are several testimonies of those who, who testified this, this execution. And some of them had a nervous breakdown, quote. We could not look at it and we got nervous breakdown and attack. So the three of us were taken to the hospital where we received injections, end of quote. How these who watched describe the execution and its victims. Jewish death in the plans of Germans was to be mass and anonymous, and its victims dehumanized before their annihilation. Meanwhile, Poles who those meanwhile Poles knew those who in August 1942 were sent to Belgium or shot on the spot. They knew Jews, if not by first and last name, at least from the place of residence or pre-war ownership or occupation. Testimonies related to deportation and killings in villages contain names of particular victims and give a rough idea of their fate. In those referred to the largest locality of Christ Neumark, the masses of anonymity of the victims established by the Germans is definitely dominant. In order for one's death to be remembered and recalled years later in a Polish testimony, its circumstances must have clearly departed from the general pattern of execution and the victim must be physically distinguished from the others. Pre-war acquaintances or social role of the person were not decisive here, but the atypical manner of death. Testimonies from Christ Neumarkt show that in each and every one of these places, Poles who watched the Jews who were familiar to them dying, heard their screams, touched corpses and breathe the air filled with the overpowering smell of their dead bodies. No one could have remained indifferent to this. For no one had the victims been distant or anonymous, and during the next phase of the Holocaust, the attitude of those Polish witnesses became critical for the Jews who tried to save themselves. I participated in a research project organized by Center, Polish Center for Holocaust Research concerning the microhistories of 
Holocaust in Polish province, and I managed to estimate that out of 3,100 Jews registered as residents of Kreis Neumark in the second half of 1942, during Aktion Reinhardt, at least 600 people tried to hide and save themselves in the territory of the county. Only nine of them survived until the end of the war in their neighborhood. So I think that those testimonies from Kreis Neumark, taken together with the results of the third stage of the Holocaust, um, force us to rethink the concept of Polish witness, bystander, onlooker, according to Hilberg, and indifference during the action Reinhardt. Barbara Engel King stated, quote, Probably the difference between the fate of the Poles and Jews during the occupation, the separate nature of these fates arranged by Germans, favored the intensification of indifference. Exhibited indifference was probably above all the product of inability to act. But there was also another kind of indifference, tinged with contempt and feeling of superiority. End of quote. Very new concept um, described by Polish anthropologist Elbita Janiska um, says that maybe a better term instead of witness, indifferent witness, would be uh, participating observers. And I think that this is something that we really have to rethink. Thank you. Thank you.